Alright, welcome back to another Explain video. Today we're going to go through the concept of refraction and total tunnel re reflection of light. And we're going to try and predict, using Snell's law, the refraction and the total internal reflection of light in a variety of situations. So let's have a look into that. If you actually have a look at three images we have here on the left hand side, um, that is an example of uh, internal reflection of light there. You can see that light isn't traveling outside or traveling inside the water. We have refraction in the two middles here, uh, bending of light. So let's have a look. Okay, so here we have a diagram of refraction of light and we have a pencil uh, that's immersed in air and water. So we try and draw that out again. We know that water is more dense than air. What we mean by density is there are more particles in water packed together than in air. So air is less dense and water is more dense. Okay? What we know, imagine we have a ray of light hitting here. Okay? Now, according to the way light bends, we are assuming that we have a magical line, or not magical, imaginary line called the normal. And this is always at 90 degrees to the point of contact. So the point of contact we have here is this point here. We're going to call this our incident ray of light. Okay? So there's that. What we're going to say is, we can see here in this diagram, here is if we have our normal line here, you can see how the pencil has kind of moved backwards um, as it's gone through the light source or the gone from um, air to water. So what's actually happening here is this ray, we'll call it ray incident, and then our ray refracted. What you actually see is our refracted ray, that angle there, is smaller than the angle of incidence. So theta i is bigger than theta r, assuming that n1, n2, that n1 is bigger than n2. So it's bending back towards normal. You can see this with the pencil here, it's moving backwards as well. So that's what we know. Now why is this happening? Well the thing is it all has to do with speed. Okay? If the speed of light going from one medium to another is increasing, we will expect that, so in this scenario here, okay, this bit here we see that V2 here has a higher velocity than V1, okay? And it only occurs from a less, or from a less dense, more dense, sorry, more dense to less dense. So it gets faster, okay? As you can see here, there's a little error. So the more dense to less dense, will increase the speed, and that's why it bends away from the normal. Okay, so that kind of gives you a description, but the question we need to go into is why. Okay, what you can think of, let's look at our interface again. We have air, we have water. Okay, in water, we have a lot more particles clumped together, like so. In air, they're a little bit more dispersed away from each other, okay? When light comes through, okay, it's going to interact with all these different particles, okay? The more light, the more that light has to interact with each particle, okay, it's going to cause these things to vibrate, okay? It might release a little bit of light afterwards, like so, but some of that energy is getting absorbed, right? So some of the energy 
is absorbed from these interactions. So the more light has to interact with these particles, it will have to use up a bit of energy and hence why it slows down. Okay? Conversely, if it's going the opposite direction, um, the less it needs to interact with, then obviously the less energy uses up. Okay, uh, so there's that. Now, one of the experiments we will talk about is using um, perspex glass light, and we're going to try and refract it like so. Okay, the um, actual scientific model we're going to use is called Snell's law. Okay. We have N1, that's what we call the refractive index. And we'll talk about a little bit more in the next slide what that means, but um, think of it as optical density. So how closely packed are the components in this? Theta I, that's the incident ray, so that's the ray going in. And theta R is a refractive ray, are the ray that's getting bent. Okay, so light ray that is being bent. Okay, so there's that. If we try and work out what refractive index is or how we work out the actual equation, um, we actually do a ratio. So the refractive index, you can think of it as a ratio of the speed of light at different mediums or in different mediums. Okay? Now, speed of light in a uh, vacuum and in air are both roughly about 3 point or 3 times 10 to the power of 8. If we want to look at um, the refractive index of ice, you'd have the speed of light in a vacuum and speed of light in ice, which is 2.29. So overall, 1.31. Uh, okay, so remember N1 stands for a vacuum or air. And if we're 1.31, that means that's how much bigger it is in comparison uh, than vacuum. Okay, so this is what we mean by uh, optical density, um, also known as the refractive index. How tightly packed is everything together? Okay, so what do we know? If we know that um, if N2 is bigger than N1, or you could easily just say uh, you're going into a uh, denser medium, uh, then the wave will bend towards the normal. So if I try and draw that out, it goes like this. Ray will bend like that. Okay, speed of light decreases. If we're going from a um, denser medium, so or we're going to a less dense medium. Okay, so one's denser, one's less dense we will find that the light will bend away from the normal. So what does that look like? It will go like this, and then it will bend out maybe like so. A little bit exaggerated, but you get the point. And the reason why that's the case is because there is an increase in speed. You can see that with our model here, uh, with the pencil going through water, oil, and then air. That one there. And obviously, as you can see, as it reaches the normal line here of contact, um, there is no refraction of light here because we did say that uh, if the angle of refraction or the angle of incidence, sorry, in this case is 90 degrees, then there is no refraction. Okay, so that's what we have. So are the different mediums and then we have the absolute refraction index. So if I want to work out um, what the refractive index is, it's just the speed of light, c, over the velocity that the object is traveling through. Another way you can work it out is if we work it out like so. So this is using Snell's law. Okay, so like so. 
if we make the assumption that one of these um, refractive index is going through air or vacuum, so let's say uh, let N1 equal to 1, and so we want to find the refractive index of N2. Let's just simply do it like so, sine I, N2 over like so, and so we find that the refractive index of N2 is sine theta I over sine theta R. Now the important part is knowing where the light source is going to. All right. So if in this case we are doing air to glass, then N1 would be the refractive index of air, and then N2 would be the refractive index of glass. If we did it the other way around though, so let's say we go from glass and then into air, then in this scenario, glass is N1 and air is N2. So think about very carefully where are you doing your measurements? Is the light going into something and then out something else? Make sure you know your reference points. Okay, so um, let's have a look at these calculations here to measure the refractive index. Okay, I'll use the one at the top. I want to measure um, the refractive index of water. So that is speed of light over velocity of whatever medium you're using. So 3 times 10, 3 times 10 to the power 8, 2.25 times 10 to the 8. We get a refractive index of 1.33. In the next question we have, we are dealing with crown glass at a particular speed of that. And speed of light in a vacuum is this. So refractive index of the crown is 3 times power of 10 over 1.798 and that's 1.25 optical index or refractive index. Okay. The next one we're going to talk about is reflection of waves. Okay. We know that according to uh, Snell's law or just by will here, we don't necessarily need to use Snell's law. We know that the incident ray, that angle there, is equal to the reflected ray here. And don't get uh, theta r confused with uh, refraction. We're looking at uh, reflection here. Okay. And again, we measure it based on the 90 degree point to the point of contact, and it goes up like so. So that's what we have there. Okay. Here's an example of uh, total internal reflection. You can see the light going through the beam of water here. And so what's actually happening here is if we try and draw it out, so we have a beam of water and light as it goes through, if we draw the normal light, it keeps bending or reflecting, bouncing in the sides here like so. So that's what's actually happening in this particular animation that we're seeing here. How does uh, total internal reflection work? Because this is just the same thing as talking about why things sparkle. Um, why are we seeing this reflection here? So if you have a look here, the main criteria firstly uh, to make total internal reflection work is the light is going from a dense medium to a less dense material. So if I want to make um, up you know, a medium that I want to use, the dense medium I have here is water, following the example I talked about, and then we talk about uh, it going into air. Okay. So that's what we're doing here. As the object or as the light ray is hitting this point here, okay, according to the normal line, there's going to be some sort of reflection occurring backwards and there will be some kind of um, refraction occurring. Okay? Now, when we get complete reflection of light, the definition goes there is 
no more refraction or at least you can't see the refraction because the angle of refraction in reference to the normal line is 90 degrees okay when we hit that point we get total internal reflection okay so total internal reflection begins okay now the angle that we're looking at here so this incident angle here we can also use um, theta c and we call that the critical angle okay so let's package this all together the critical angle is the incident ray or the incident angle for light to travel from one medium to another where when it travels to the less dense medium it's going to refract 90 degrees to the normal line or you could say it refracts parallel to the interface okay 90 degrees to the normal or 180 to the interface whichever one ideally it's the normal line we're using because that's how we do our measurements so there's that if we continue to increase from the critical angle so let's say our critical angle here is 50 degrees and we go further than that we'll get more reflection so we'll see you know we'll still just keep reflecting in so that's the idea all right so i'm going to show uh, this simulation later on um, probably in a separate video but it will just explain nicely how um, the whole concept of refraction or reflection works. As you can see in this image, there is refraction here, but at the same time, there's also reflection. So never think of scenarios as you only have refraction uh, or you only have reflection. The way that it works in life is it actually, in real life, there's a lot of different things happening at the same time. You can get a bit of reflection and a bit of refraction, maybe a bit of dispersion scattering and all those kinds of things so that's what we have but before we go um let me just show you so the refractive index of air is one the refractive index of water is 1.33 so water is more dense if you actually have a look here theta i that angle without doing any measurements you can see is bigger than theta r okay the reason being as you can see if we drew the imaginary line of where the light should continue okay theta r has bent itself or refracted itself closer to the normal okay so that's going through everything we talked about particularly with uh, Snell's law okay so if we want to talk about what is the critical angle um, the angle in which an angle of refraction is exactly 90 degrees and uh, the range of electromagnetic waves is the electromagnetic spectra. Okay, so how do we work out um, the critical angle of something? So let's just have our nice formula here. Again, this is Snell's law. Already visited a couple of times. Okay, we're going to do an assumption first, okay? I'm going to rearrange this uh, to make sense of everything. So I'm going to get this formula here. All you see here is instead of writing incident ray or angle 1, I've changed it to the critical angle. So this is the angle that's going to go in and then the angle that's coming out, the refracted angle here, that's going to be 90 degrees because we said if something is to reflect back in like that, it must firstly refract at 90 degrees and that's why you don't see any more refraction okay so that's the angle we're getting here all right so one assumption i can make is assuming okay assuming n2 is in air or you know a vacuum I 
I can make the value of n2 equal to 1. Okay, so what I'll get here is n1 sine theta c here equals to 1 times sine 90 and then what I'll find is if I know what the uh, value of n2 is uh, I can also find the critical angle like so. Um, so we know that sine 90 is just 1 okay so uh, the critical angle is just sine minus uh, 1 over n1 like that. Assuming you're dealing with a vacuum or a or assuming you're <laughs> sorry I'll say that again assuming that light is going into vacuum or into air. Otherwise if you don't know what the refractive index is or if you don't know the exact number then you would use this equation here. So sine theta critical angle equals to n2 over n1. Okay? And obviously the other one we have here. So that's Snell's law. This is the bottom one here is to help us find the critical angle. The most important part you need to remember besides the formula is when we have total internal reflection or when we have the critical angle. That's the first point in which the refracted ray is refracting at 90 degrees to the normal line. Okay, That's an important component. If we want to do some calculations of working out the um, critical angle, let's use these ones as an example. So we have water and we know that it strikes air. So knowing that it strikes air, we know that the uh, refracted index, refractive index is 1. Okay, So using the formula n1 that into sine r. Okay, calculate the angle of refraction here. Okay, so in this case, we're not actually trying to find um, the critical angle, we're just trying to find the refraction. So I'll move to question four. And then I'll come back to uh, question three. Okay. So, we're going from water into air. Remember, water is more dense, air is less dense. So, we are going to get a uh, total internal reflection regardless. Water is 1.33. We have sine theta c. Air is 1. And then we know that sine for, refraction to, uh, for internal reflection to occur. Refraction is 90 degrees to normal. So, we get that. So we have sine C1 over 1.33 as sine 90 is equal to 1. Get that across. Critical angle is inverse sine 1 over 1.33. So the angle you should get is about 48.8 degrees. Going back to the question above here, we are going from air to water, so air is 1 sine theta i in this case is 30, refractive index of water is 1.33 and we're trying to find sine theta r. Okay, So if we just move everything across sine 30 divided by 1.33 gives us sine theta r. So theta r is inverse sine sine 30 over 1.33 and that gives us a value of 221.22 sorry 0.1. Okay so that's how you do those questions there. So what we really covered today is uh, what is total internal reflection, what is the refracted angle, like so. So that gives you a nice little summary of everything we need to do. Um, if you want to look at in terms of uh, simulating or doing experiments on that, by all means go through that. I'll also upload a video that kind of explains um, the exact same concept uh, using the simulation format. 
Um, so if you want to check that out, um, this will be uploaded as well. Anyhow, um, continue watching these videos if you need a refresh or maybe just have a look for some inspiration of new things to learn. Have a good day.